All right, welcome to chapter seven. And this chapter, I think I mentioned in the last video, is going to be probably the most like interesting chapter uh, in the book. and Or not interesting, but the like, most important chapter in the book. And it might be the most interesting to you, depending on what kind of person you are. Um, I find it pretty interesting myself. And so we're going to find, uh, now we talk about eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And so what is an eigenvalue and eigenvector? Um, so here we're given a matrix A, as you can see. And the problem would just be find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of A. And here below, I have written determinant of A minus lambda I equals zero, right? And so this is what an eigenvalue is. An eigenvalue is gonna be one of these lambdas that such that when you subtract, uh, when you take A minus lambda I, so what does that mean? It means that you just subtract lambda from the diagonals. And we'll show this when we do this problem. Uh, when you subtract lambda from the diagonals of A, and you take the determinant of the resulting matrix and you set it equal to zero, um, lambda is going to be all of the values that make this zero. Okay, and so that's going to be an eigenvalue. And so let's do this problem then and we'll show you, uh, we'll find the eigenvalues first and then we'll talk about what an eigenvector is. Well, not, not in detail, of course, the theory, I'm going to leave it to you. Uh, you should do it in class or uh, in recitation or whatever. So. All right, what is a minus lambda i? So a minus lambda i, like I said above, is just you subtract lambda from the diagonals. So negative 6, 5 minus lambda, 0, 3, negative 3, minus 1 minus lambda. OK, and now we want to find the determinant of a minus lambda i. And what we have to do here then is almost always for these uh, eigenvalue and eigenvector problems, um, you want to take the determinant by cofactor expansion. and so. We can do a cofactor expansion, and there's actually one value here that uh, I would like to expand on because it's the least amount of work, and that's going to be this last row, last column. And again, if you forgot and if you're unfamiliar with the determinant ways, again, uh, I would look at the chapter three videos, which uh, I cover in detail how to take you know cofactor expansions at uh, like random places such as this one in the bottom right hand corner. So, all right, the term a minus lambda i then is going to be negative one minus lambda, which is this bottom right hand corner value. All right times then the determinant of this uh, two by two matrix up here. So negative four minus lambda, three, negative six, five minus lambda. Okay, And simplifying, this becomes negative one plus lambda. So I took the negative out of the quantity. And then this becomes uh, negative four minus lambda times five minus lambda plus 18. Right? Okay, and now uh, to find, and we want to set this equal to zero to find our lambdas. And there's no really easy way to do this. You're just going to have to brute force this algebra out. So this becomes negative one plus lambda. Uh, this becomes negative 20 plus four lambda minus five lambda plus lambda squared plus 18. All right, that's equal to zero. Um, simplify more, negative parentheses one plus lambda. And then you get lambda squared minus lambda minus two. All right, again, equal to zero. And then so now you get negative one plus lambda. You get lambda, minus, uh, lambda plus one, lambda minus two, and that's equal to zero. And now it becomes pretty obvious what lambdas are. Um, your lambdas are gonna be negative one, negative one, and two, okay? So these are your eigenvalues. These skadoodles, lambdas, are your eigen eigenvalues. OK, and so uh, once you have these eigenvalues, you can find your eigenvectors. And so now after you find your eigenvalues, you can find. Uh, so this is essentially like step one, right? Step one, uh, one. All right, step two is to find your eigenvectors using the eigenvalues. And so what you want to do then to find your eigenvectors is you want to plug in each unique lambda into this equation, a minus lambda i. So for example, let's take lambda equals negative one. All right, then a minus lambda i is becomes a plus i, right? Because a minus negative one times i is a plus i. And what is our matrix? Well, our matrix becomes four, uh, so, you get negative four plus one, right? So this is, this becomes negative three, three, zero. 
okay? And then this is negative six, five minus lambda, so five plus lambda, uh, five plus one, six, six, zero. And then you get three, negative three, and then negative one plus one, zero, okay? And now what is an eigenvector? Well, an eigenvector is going to be some vector V that such that when you take a matrix multiplication, you get zero. So essentially, V is going to be in the null space of this matrix, right? Because if, v, so if V is gonna be a three by one vector, uh, this is a three by three matrix. And so you want this to equal the zero vector, the zero vector, which is gonna be three by one. And so you wanna find all the V's that make, um, that make this zero. And so, Essentially, now what we have to do is find the null space of this matrix A plus I. So we want to find the null space of this matrix A plus I. And how are we going to do that? Well, this is how. So now we have negative 3, 3, 0, negative 6, 6, 0, 3, negative 3, 0. And we're multiplying by some x, y, z, and that equals 0, 0, 0, right? And essentially, uh, the way to do this, and I hate to say it, but it's to eyeball it, and <laughs> it comes with a little bit of practice, right? So what do you see? You see that this last column is zero, which means that Z can be anything, right? So if we let X and Y be zero, and Z can be anything, so we'll make it one to make it simple, then we see that negative three, three, zero, negative six, six, zero, three, negative three, zero, multiplied by zero, zero, 001 is going to equal the zero vector, right? That's almost obvious because if you do this multiplication, zero, 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 and then zero, 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 and then zero, 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 right? So you get zero, zero, zero. Um, cool. All right, so then V1 is going to be zero, zero, 001. And what else? What can another eigenvector be? Well, again, you can solve for the null space of this matrix, um, where you, like, you say z is a free variable, I guess, in this case, and then you solve for x and y in terms of z. Um, or, right, we can just continue eyeballing it. And this eyeballing tactic is something that you're just gonna have to get better at. Uh, and it comes with practice, believe me. Uh, and since everything else from here on out essentially just ends up using eigenvalues and eigenvectors, you're gonna get really good at this. So now we have negative three, three, zero, negative six, six, zero, three, negative three, zero, and you just play around with this and see what you can find uh, to end up zero. So again, if you take x, y, z, uh, and you just multiply this out, what do you get? You get negative three x plus three y is equal to zero. You get negative six x, plus six y is equal to zero, and then you get three x minus three y is equal to zero. And, all right, this doesn't do anything, right? So, this is equal to zero, right? And so, one way you can do this then is you actually just set up the system equations and you solve for the pivots. So, zero, 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 right, reduce, uh, you actually get negative three, three, zero, 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 okay? And so that's what happens when you reduce this matrix. And what do you do? Well, we already had the case where we let the last, where we let uh, pivot free, free. We already have the case where we let this guy be the free variable. So now we have to let this guy be the free variable, right? And so if I let y, equal t, then you see that x is going to equal t as well, right? Because you get uh, negative 3t plus 3t, which is zero, which means, and z can be anything it wants, really. So to make this simple, I'm gonna let t be one, and I'm gonna let z be zero. So now we have this vector one, one, zero, and that's gonna be another eigenvector. V2 equals one, one, zero. Okay, 
and you'll see that this works. It works when you multiply it out because when you take one times, uh, when you multiply one, one, zero with this matrix A plus I, you'll get the zero vector. And again, this was by row reducing, um, or you could have just eyeballed this from this matrix here. So either way is correct. But one thing that must happen is that V1 and V2, these guys have to be linearly independent, all right? Otherwise, they're the same eigenvector. And in this case, they are linearly independent because we see that there's a one here and there's a zero here. Um, and that essentially, when you have two vectors, uh, that's gonna tell you that they're gonna be linearly independent. So, whoops. Um, all right, so now we have V1 and V2, but we're not done, right? Because this only came from lambda equals negative one. So now we have to deal with the case where lambda is equal to, uh, or lambda is equal to two. All right. And now what happens when lambda is equals to two? Well, uh, you get the matrix. And I don't know what the matrix is. All right, so now you subtract two from the diagonal. So you get negative six, three, zero. Uh, and then it looks like this becomes negative six, nine, zero? No, negative six, three, zero. And then you get three, negative three, negative three. Okay. And so here we are. And this is what we end up with. Let me, let me make sure that I have the right matrix real quick. Do, 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 do. Uh, okay, so this becomes so six, three, and then negative three, three. Okay, cool. So this is the right matrix. And so now what? Well, we want this to equal zero. So um, we can realize then x, y, z is equal to zero, zero, zero. You have to realize that from this first row right here, you realize that if I let, let's say I let x equal one, all right, if x is equal to one, then y has to be equal to two, right? Because then I get six times one, negative six times one is negative six, and then three times two is positive six, zero times whatever is zero, and then it's negative six plus six, which is going to be zero, all right? And that also comes from the second row too. So I know that my first two entries are gonna be one and two, and that means from the last entry, I have three, negative three, negative three times one, two, something, right? Or one, two, and Z is equal to zero. And what do I get here? I get three minus six minus three Z is equal to zero. And negative three minus three Z is equal to zero. And so Z is equal to negative one. And so my last eigenvector, then we'll call it V3, is going to be equal to one, two, one. And so here, now we have our three eigenvectors, V1, V2, and V3. And we have to make sure that they're linearly independent to be eigenvectors. Um, and they are, they're linearly independent. So we are certain that they're eigenvectors. And yeah, and there can only be three eigenvectors for a three by three matrix, okay? So, and that's true uh, with eigenvalues as well. So at most, there can be three eigenvalues and three eigenvectors. In this case, we only have two eigenvalues um, with negative one is repeated twice, right? So negative one, negative one, uh, and two. So we only have two unique eigenvectors or eigenvalues, all right? So we have two unique eigenvalues. Um, at maximum for a three by three matrix, uh, you can have three unique eigenvalues and we have three linearly independent eigenvectors, right? This guy, these two up here, and this one on the bottom. And so we have three linearly independent eigenvectors. Um, so you'll notice that the number of linearly independent eigenvectors doesn't have to equal the number of unique eigenvalues, all right? It doesn't have to. Um, and since we have three linearly independent eigenvectors uh, 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 in a three by three matrix, we say that these eigenvectors, uh, V1, V2, and V3, uh, they form a basis for the eigenspace. So 
if you find your eigenvectors, you'll find a basis for the eigenspace. And the eigenvalues don't really mean anything. Um, the, the only thing that these eigenvalues mean is that when you actually see repeated eigenvalues, they, they actually could mean a lot of trouble. And in this case, it didn't cause this trouble. And later on, we'll dive into situations where repeated eigenvalues give us a bunch of headaches. And so, yeah, so this is how you find eigenvalues and eigenvectors. I know it might not be super satisfying to have the eigenvector part just be like eyeball it, but unfortunately that's gonna be uh, with experience. That's just gonna be how, uh, how you're gonna do it. And yeah, so in the next video then, we're actually gonna move on to 7.3 and 7.4, I think, um, where we're gonna talk about diagonalization and matrix exponentials.